watch this before the narcissist does this to you. There are a lot of weird creepy things that the narcissist will do to you if you are around them long enough. Because the abuse tends to escalate over time as it becomes normalized and yet they become more and more dissatisfied. As the initial thrill and feelings of excitement begin to fade away, which is why there's no cut off point for the abuse. Because it's like a drug to them, they're addicted. It may have been satisfying for them in the beginning, like an initial ingestion of a drug. But then those feelings of escapism and euphoria begin to disappear. So they start feeling like they need a bigger hit or a bigger dose. They need to be pumped full of it. They need to feel it flowing throughout their being. Because it's the only thing that makes them feel alive. It brings energy to them. When they can suck the life out of an unsuspecting empath. Which is why as time goes by and they become more and more dissatisfied, they become even more desperate and dependent on their drug of choice. Which of course is the empath. This person who has an unusually strong ability to feel other people's emotional and mental states which is a highly attractive trait and it is like a drug to the narcissist it turns them into blood sucking zombies where it's like they've suddenly been brought back to life although they still do not possess human qualities but they're able to identify that you do not possess any intrinsic needs from them they understand that as empaths we have no natural desire to connect to them because they're unable to bring us internal joy or to help us to create purpose. And we're typically drawn to people who we can help or change while the narcissist does not desire to change. So they cannot be changed. And yet they string us along and dangle a carrot on a stick making us believe that they are steadily improving for the better. When it's all a facade, if anything, they're getting worse. But they disguise it by manipulating you into feeling a feeling of dependence on them. By making you feel like you need them. When the only thing you need is to get as far away from them as you possibly can. Because they will suck the life out of you. They will turn you into a shell of a person. And by the end of it, you won't even recognize yourself. You won't even know who you are. Because they will get you to ruminate. They will cause you to think deeply about them or someone else or something else. They will cause you to contemplate, consider and give thought to meaningless situations or things. To where you're constantly going over the same matters in your thoughts again and again with purposive thinking. Because they're corrupting your innocent mind with distasteful suggestions and ideas. until you become just like them and you start to think in the same way that they do while you may have never thought that way before and you may never have had the inclination to obsessively revisit the same thoughts or themes over and over again until you got involved with this person But regardless of that, they will blame and shame you for these thoughts and they will gaslight you. They will try to make you believe that you're losing your mind. As though there's a problem with your train of thought. Or the way that you reach a conclusion or a line of reasoning. 
when in fact they're just gaslighting you again. Because it's intentional and deliberate. They know exactly what they're doing. And they're trying to sink their teeth into you. Like an animal biting vigorously into its prey. Which is why they will become fully engaged in every aspect of your life. They will become completely involved with great enthusiasm, concentration and conviction. As though they're trying to solve a problem. When in fact they are the problem. Because they are deliberately infecting your mind. They're trying to infect and contaminate you. They're trying to pass their infection onto you. They're trying to make you impure. They're trying to cause you to become morally wrong where you engage in acts that you should not do. Acts that you would have a duty to refrain from doing. They're trying to strip you of your moral values and beliefs. And they will try to achieve this by becoming a constant presence in your life. Because they already know that they're corrupt. They know they're contaminated. They love to get your attention because they were deprived of it in childhood. They have childhood traumas that they never resolved. They have a history of feeling unloved, which they're trying to embellish onto you by trying to make you obsessed with them. Even while they have no intention or even the ability to give you the love that you deserve, they're exploitative. They make use of situations and treat you unfairly. They form relationships based on what they can gain from you rather than genuine emotional connection. They have no desire or motivation to connect to you. They lack effective empathy. They have an inability to share your feelings and experience. They can't put themselves in your shoes. They engage in manipulative and exploitative behaviors to maintain control and to ensure that their emotional needs are met. To where they cry and complain easily and often and without good reason. They throw temper tantrums. Even when you've done nothing to even warrant that type of response. Or they plan and coordinate the elements of a situation so that you react and then they can assert their will on you. They will isolate you so that they can become your only source of influence in the hopes that you will begin to doubt yourself and have undying faith in the very person who is abusing you or they may even start a smear campaign against you and enforce flying monkeys to do their bidding on their behalf where they will try to sensitize you to certain stimuli and try to turn your own senses against you. They will manipulate your sense of sight, hearing, touch, taste, smell, movement and even body awareness. They will do everything in their power to turn you against yourself until you become one of them. And you're working with them against yourself. Because that is their ultimate goal. They want to turn you against yourself. Because your strength, willpower and determination is a threat to their control. By that point, it's the only thing standing in the way of them being your lord, your master. And that's what they really want. They decide to have total power and control over their targets so that they can harvest your empathic energy because what you have is very rare. They may never have seen anything like that before. You're highly sensitive. You're highly attuned to the energies and emotions of the people around you. You know what they're thinking and feeling. Which reflects badly on them. It makes them feel bad about themselves. So they want to change your perception of yourself. And they want to change your perception of them. So that it changes the reflection of themselves that they're receiving from you. And they will do this by manipulating your senses. 
and by causing you to ruminate. They will start mindless arguments. They will zone in on your daily activities so that they can cause obstructions and deliberately cause what may seem to be accidents or coincidental inconveniences. If you listen to music, read books or watch YouTube videos or movies, they will try to get you to filter everything through them so that they remain a constant influence in your life and it's because they can't let go they need to have control so they end up micromanaging you they control every part however small of your daily activities because they have an excessive focus on observing and controlling you and they have an obsession with details even while they're treating you as though you're unimportant which doesn't add up because if they really saw you as unimportant why would they want to control you especially when you're just one person usually there is nothing wrong with wanting to have the control as long as it is driven by a desire to feel safe and to keep a sense of order where people are protected from and not exposed to danger or risk where there is a sense of efficiency and consistency but their control and personality is driven by their mental health condition they're mentally ill they have a personality disorder which is why they will try to control your finances they will give you the silent treatment when things don't go their way they will criticize your behavior or appearance to make you change they will dominate conversations they will constantly interrupt you they will isolate you they will lie so that things go their way they feel the need to have complete and specific information about you such as who you're with and where you are at all times and yet at the same time they show this extreme desire to impress you to cause you to feel admiration or respect to make you recognize their importance or value while they refuse to acknowledge yours and they show an unwillingness to adapt to the circumstances because the only thing they care about is what's going on in their own brain they have an inability to connect it's just all about them it's about what they think or what they want you to think but even then it's just so they can feel better about themselves even when it seems that they're doing something good or something right it's never out of the goodness of their heart it's never done out of kindness it's because they're expecting something in return or because they decide to have control of you so that even just for a moment they can feel in control of themselves which is why it will often seem like they don't care about anyone else because the reality is that they don't people who have this mental illness have an inability to see anything outside of themselves people are just mirrors to the narcissist they're objects that they use to feel better about themselves and narcissists objectify themselves as well but that does not mean that you are unimportant they can make it appear that way at times because they don't want you to know but the reality is that empaths are very rare narcissistic personality disorder may affect up to 15% of the world's population which means that up to 1 in 7 people may have the full blown disorder Dr. Ramani also mentioned in one of her videos that she believes that around 50% of the population may engage in narcissism which is defined by selfishness involving a sense of entitlement and a lack of empathy which arises from the failure to distinguish the self from external objects and this is typically a feature of a mental disorder where they view other people as extensions of themselves and they use them to feel in control and to get their emotional needs met While with empaths, the opposite is true. We desire to make other people feel safe and comfortable. 
at times even at the cost of our own health and well-being. But empaths are very rare. Only 1-2% to of the population have the ability to feel and absorb the emotions surrounding them. Which is why despite what they may have led you to believe you are actually very important to the narcissist. Just look back at the time you spent with them. And remember all of the things they went out of their way to subject you to. That reveals your significance and importance. But as a tool or an appliance. Rather than an actual person. Because narcissists have an inability to connect. They lack effective empathy. They use cognitive empathy. And they will often team up with other narcissistic people to prey on vulnerable empaths so that they can harvest their energy. They will try to contain you. To keep you hooked on them. So that you become a constant source of supply. While making you believe that you possess is something negative or something to be ashamed of. When in actuality, although it may seem like a curse when you are around the narcissist. It is actually a blessing in disguise if you share it with the right people. There is nothing wrong with being emotionally intense, sensitive or gifted with a heightened sensitivity. It's like a powerful sports car. It just requires a special fuel and a specific kind of care. If it is in the right condition and it is maintained and protected it can be one of the most high performing machines in the world. It's just that you have never been taught how to use these abilities properly and to your advantage. It is in fact the narcissist who is sensitively and perceptively impaired. They have an inability to appreciate other people's feelings. They're unaware. They lack insight. They only see what they want to see. Whatever will make them feel better about themselves rather than what may be true. Or what may help another person. Which means that they lack value. Because our value is determined by what we give rather than solely what we consume for ourselves. Which is a concept that narcissists never seem to grasp. And it's why they're always so miserable. Their lack of empathy is the cause to their demise. And it also draws other people into harm's way. Because they're not considering other people. They're just thinking about how they can harness your energy for themselves. When it just never satisfies them. The abuse always escalates. They just end up needing more and more. They become more and more involved. While still experiencing pervasive dissatisfaction and disappointment because they're going about it the wrong way. They're seeking power and control which actually prevents them from ever experiencing the feelings that they're looking for. But at the same time it's because they can't. They can't experience effective empathy. They can't share another person's experience. The only experience that matters to them is their own. Which is why they will try to do unethical things to have you be obsessed with them. They will gaslight you. They will stalk and harass you. They will do whatever it takes just to get you to notice them. Because they know that's the only thing that they can do. They already know that you're not going to want to be involved with them. Because you have an innate desire to help people. And they can't be helped or changed. They rely on their disorder in order to function efficiently. Even though they will never find true love or happiness. They do it in order to regulate their emotions. And many of them actually enjoy it. They enjoy the rush of adrenaline and the release of dopamine in their brains. It makes them feel alive. It gives them a sense of purpose. Even though it may seem purposeless to you. Because they're only thinking about what's in the moment. 
or they're thinking two steps ahead so that they can experience a situation or event that they've imagined in their minds so that they can experience these feelings of having got one over on you. When you look into their eyes, it may seem like there's nothing there, but there's actually a lot of things going on in their minds. They are constantly overthinking. They struggle with being present and living in the moment. They're constantly thinking about how to get attention and how to maintain their image. They're constantly thinking about how to destroy you or your future plans. And they're constantly thinking that you are out to get them, which makes them paranoid and fearful. But at the same time, they also enjoy it. They thrive in negative conditions because it allows them to get their emotional needs met by keeping them distracted and stopping them from looking within and thinking that the danger is outside of them, which is what makes them so dangerous because they're paranoid and delusional and it all comes from them feeling like they are not enough. So they're constantly trying to accomplish something, even if it's just them trying to abuse or control you. It's a distraction. Which is why they're never satisfied. It's almost like they are possessed. As though a demonic spirit has access to their thoughts and feelings. Which gives them the ability to manipulate your emotions, perceptions and beliefs. And it makes you behave how they want you to if you're around them long enough. Because by that point the spirit will take over you. But it will never nest in you like it does with them. Your empathy will always return. It will never go away completely. It's not even a choice that you're able to make. It's almost like you're not allowed to go down that path. You were destined for greater things. But the spirit will continue to dominate their minds and it will make it impossible for them to ever experience happiness, satisfaction, love or peace. Where they're constantly focused on revenge, fear and envy as it continues to distract them from looking within. Which is why they will use every trick in the book to distract you from your reality. To convince you that they're right or that something you got wrong. Because they already know that you're right on the money. They know that everything you're saying is true. Which is why it's so powerful when they invalidate you. It causes cognitive dissonance where you begin to doubt yourself. They will call you crazy for something you later find out to be true. They will gaslight you so that you focus on your thoughts, feelings, memory and experience being wrong. It confuses you and causes you to second guess yourself where you doubt yourself and blame your intentions until you end up relying on the narcissist even more and you fall prey to their mobilization. Which they're only engaged in because they already know you shouldn't want anything to do with them. That's why they get you to doubt yourself to begin with. If they knew that they were good people to be around, they wouldn't need you to doubt anything about yourself, but they do it because they're envious of you, which is why they will often seek to destroy you and provoke feelings of jealousy within you. It's a defense mechanism. It makes them feel better for being envious of you. And it makes you feel worse for doing or having something that they want. Because they want to twist the story. Which is why they will blame and shame you. They will criticize you. They will judge or mock you. And then they will claim that you're being too sensitive. When really it is their ego that can't take the pain. They feel unimportant. Because they're not getting the attention that they want from you. So then they will go out and impress strangers to try to create feelings of jealousy within you to get you to explain yourself to them and to get you to question and doubt yourself when they should be explaining themselves for their behavior and it's why they always act arrogant and entitled because really they know that the opposite is true they already know that they have no value Which is why they're always trying to prove themselves to you. 
a person doesn't need to go out of their way to prove something if they already know that it's true. Which is why you will end up overanalyzing things because you're trying to figure out the truth. They will often rely on reactive abuse so that they can feel better about their feelings and their mistakes. They will do whatever it takes to provoke a reaction from you and then they will stand back and point the finger at you. They will accuse you of overreacting when you may be having a normal reaction based on what they're doing to you and while they may be aware of that it makes them feel better about themselves which is why they want you to think about things in the same way that they do they don't want you to think for yourself they don't want you to know the truth about who they really are and what they really want from you because then they would lose control of you as their target you wouldn't want anything to do with them if you knew that they just want you to think about them and it's so that they can harvest your energy and then destroy you because that is the only thing that they can do when they're around an empath otherwise your empathy will resurface their shame and then you would unintentionally destroy them which is why they always have to twist it on you and make you feel like something is wrong with you because they don't want the shoe to be on the other foot they wouldn't have a leg to stand on because then you would quickly realize that you're dealing with a zombie an energy vampire someone who only knows how to manipulate and do strength and nourishment from your thoughts and emotions because that is why they feast on any morsel of your attention and energy they are nourished by the essence of your being they use you to feed their emotional needs and they leave you feeling drained and used after they've leashed off your kindness and empathy because they have a fragile ego they feel worthless and insignificant so they have an insatiable need for validation and admiration and your steady attention is the indispensable factor and influence that maintains their self-esteem their confidence in their own worth and abilities which is why they need you to be constantly preoccupied with them so that they can feel magnificent and impressive and of social importance Your natural gift of empathy makes you of first importance to a narcissist because you are the highest quality of supply. You have the ability to deeply feel and understand their emotions, which is something they can't even do for themselves. They are disconnected from their emotions, which is why they prey on your kindness and sensitivity, because they want you to be stuck in a constant recurring thought loop where you are fixed on fears, motives and how you feel you should not have acted or acted so that they can remain a permanent residence in your thoughts which then serves as evidence to them of their power over you they will place you in a hypnotic trance to ensure that they're always in your leading thoughts because that's just what they've learned they had to do to survive emotionally they can't get their emotional needs met like a normal person because maybe they're just boring or uninteresting so they had to find an alternative way to get around it which turned into the skilled and precise craft of manipulation because they learned that it is the only way that they can keep your attention on them and it serves their need for control it keeps you emotionally attached to the narcissist and it prevents you from continuing on your healing journey which is why they want to keep you trapped in these memories and emotions because it makes them feel like they have conquered you as it erodes your self-esteem and it prevents you from becoming the person that you could be thank you for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.